So today we will continue with, with verse number 13 from Shishi Vilapa Kusamanjani. Commentary. Thirst for loving devotion is the very life force of sadhana. And if one performs one's sadhana well, this thirst will surely awaken. How eager a person like me is for sense gratification. Even in my dreams, I see only sense objects. Those who do bhajan will think only of their ishtati. Srila Vishnuath Chakravarti describes the effect of prema on a loving devotee's heart as follows. Perdón, solicito que hablan el, eh, please eh, open the Spanish translation. Thank you. Srila Vishnavath Chakravarti describes the effect of prema on a loving devotee's heart as follows. In the stage of sadhana, the devotee is still bound by hundreds of thousands of ropes of possessiveness towards possessions, money, family and friends. But when prema appears, these ropes will easily become spiritualized and they will tightly bind the devotee to the beauty of the Lord's transcendental forms, qualities and pastimes. Radhe, Radhe, I'm sorry. Um, Rasamai, can you please say where is it in the verse 13? Because I think Sudevi has problems of finding it in the book. Yes, my dear. From PDF, page 53 on the top. It's a new version. It's a new version. It's a PDF version of the book. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. It's okay, Sudevi. You find me. We wait. She didn't find it because probably she has the book, right? Uh, maybe someone has the PDF and we can send it to her. Or... Yeah. 
Or how do you feel? So, Devi, maybe you can translate without reading because Rasamai is an expert reader also. Very slow and nice. We check quickly in the book if it is there also. There is differences. There are some things are including and some things are not including in the hardbound book. My dear uh, Sudevi, in the book, it is on the page 59 on the top. Verse 13, page 59 on the top. It is written, next sentence is, Prema rises like the sun. Yes. Should we go on? So there is so page fifty nine in Villa Kusumanjali on the top on PDF fifty two. PDF, oh, So we continue. Prema rises like the sun, making the darkness of ignorance and the stars of all other human pursuits fade from the sky of the heart. In any good life of sadhana, there must be some experience like this. How many things don't I always miss in my life? But I never miss Radharani. My mind is absorbed in thinking of sense objects. I am not enthusiastic to do bhajan and I don't experience how insignificant this world is. I could not establish a sweet relationship with Radharani. What kind of a devotee am I? A practicing devotee should rebuke himself like that.
when taste for bhajan awakens, the material world seems like a burning forest fire. And the devotee weeps for a desire of the service of his ishtate. Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. I will try to give some small comment. We can see here that how much important is the taste. Ruchi. Because without Ruchi, no one can perceive the world like a place which is not suitable for the spiritual soul. And very often it said higher taste will help devotees to overcome lower taste. And this higher taste, or ruchi, is the only way who can help a person to bring the consciousness in that state to perceive this material world in a proper way, like a burning forest fire. Without ruchi, without this taste for spiritual life, for the bhajan, it's very difficult, almost impossible. So, how to get the taste? By associating with those who are already on that stage of taste or ruchi. Because without taste, this strong bondage in material world will be not possible to conquer. And this ruchi, this taste, is actually the beginning state. It's not the final level of bhakti, it's just the beginning. And the more devotee is developing, his taste very sincerely following acharyas this taste becoming more condensed and condensed and condensed and this taste this ruchi brings devotee to the stage of attachment strong attachment to beloved Ishtade, in Manjari's case, strong attachment to Radharani. And this is Sadhana Bhakti. Up to the stage of Ashakti, devotee is practicing Sadhana. And one very encouraging thing is, that even in that stage of sadhana, up to ashakti, the prema is a present. Very slightly, but is present. And because of prema, kripa, devotee can advance and come on the stage of strong attachment for beloved Radhika. And it said that then the teacher who is teaching the dance take devotee for the hands and from that stage she leads him to the other stages without his endeavor.
up to the stage of a shakti, devotee is putting his endeavor for bhajan, for recognizing different bad habits in his heart. Like Gurudev is saying, he is doing his homework. But by the mercy of Prema, and my, how prem, mercy of Prema is coming through the Guru, in one moment, devotee comes on the stage, half ripen stage, and this is Bhav. Emotions are, are appearing, strong, strong emotions. Not like before, but strong emotions. Heart is melting completely. And devotee never lose his hope that one day, in one lifetime, he will attain beloved Swami. In that stage, meditation is very, very deep, very strong, uninterrupted. And in that stage, sadhana is also very, very sweet, although it's half ripen. So the hope is that in all life of devotee, this prema is always present, bringing him step by step, step by step, slowly and surely to the final attainment of the goal. And Vishwanath Chakriya Thakur is saying here that in the beginning stage of sadhana, devotee is strongly bound by the ropes of condition, shortly to say. But when the prema arises, then first ray of prema, bhava, helps devotee to come on another platform. So even in the stage of conditioned state of life, for sincere devotee, enthusiastic devotee, prema is present, in a slight intensity and helping him to go forward and forward, forward. I'm sorry, I don't know if you hear this strange sound. You don't hear because my neighbor is drilling the wall. It's okay. Sorry, I have to explain to you. <laughs> Brindavan mood, no problem. Yes. All audio, yes. okay. Grazie. Thank you. We don't thank hear you. anything. All right, thank you very much. Because in one year I'm hearing, listening his drilling, and in another year I'm trying to listen what Guru Dev is talking in my heart. You know, so. It's Balaram <laughs> outside drilling. Yes, Antaranga <laughs> Bahirangi. Yes. So, you got the point, I tried to set something shortly, uh, because I think that this information, yes, it's information, it's very uh, helpful, encouraging for devotee, that we are in any stage from Shraddha to Prema, we are not without Prema, actually. We don't see it, maybe, because the bondage of conditional life is a strong, but Prema is helping with Kripa, true representative. Guru, Acharyas, other Vaishnavas. And we have just to recognize it. When we recognize, even if we are conditioned, then we will swim in the waves of mercy. Always be under the shelter umbrella 
But it's very interesting that under this umbrella actually is a huge rain. <laughs> umbrella is usually we are using for protecting from the rain. But under this umbrella is the rain of Mahabhav. Not the rain of burning forest fire, material world, but this is the rain of full mercy. Waterfall from Mahabala, which is coming under this chatra, under this umbrella. And this is the mercy which we have to recognize, and then it will be much more easy to go strongly and bravely through all these different stages of sadhana bhakti. Radhe, Radhe. I said something. If someone, please, whatever you feel, we have somehow to <laughs> manage this Sangha because Gurudev is coming, but it's upon our shoulder. I don't know also, I didn't know that it will happen, but Radhe Radhe. Sri Narottam Das Takura sings. O Lord, O Ocean of Mercy, my body burns in the false network of Maya. When will I attain the company of the Sakis? String flower garlands in Rindavana and hang them around Radha and Mohana's necks, being a Manjali. I will stand before them and fan them with a yak tail fan, and I will anoint their limbs with aguru and sandalwood scents. On the order of the sakis, I will serve them better leaves. And I will decorate them with tilak and sindur. I will witness their moon-like faces as they play their funny pastimes. And I will seat, seat them on a lion throne. When will that day come that Narottam Dasa sees these sweet pastimes? My mind yearns for their mercy. Prathana. When life is full of devotion, there will never be a lack of prema. Priti Sandarbha is written, devotion is not interrupted by other things. and cannot tolerate ulterior motives.
if by the grace of Sri Guru, sacred greed awakens in the heart of the aspirant, he will surely gain such relish. Bhajan means to seek. Radhe. To Radhe. practice. Yeah. <laughs> so we can see here from the example of Narottam Das Thakur, what does it mean to be on the full ripen stage of bhakti. And he is giving us the guidance that we use these important instructions for our own meditation. These words, a little bit longer words, Explaining in a details, Manjari Bhava, Manjari Seva, and how Manjaris are thinking, and what is desire of Manjaris, and what is the Seva, service. By meditating, on these words, feelings are appear in the heart, and these feelings are coming from the Acharya's heart. This is why we have to follow their instructions, because in their words, feelings of their own hearts are infused. And by listening them, drinking them with the ears, meditating with full heart and mind, their feelings, their bhava, will be slowly and surely infused in our hearts. And this is mean, that means following the footsteps of Acharyas. When we say following the footsteps, it means following the feelings. Footsteps, maybe for our Western minds, intelligence and knowledge has different meanings, maybe sometimes strange, but the soul of the feet is the place of so many tender feelings. And by touching the feet of someone, we are coming in connection with his feelings. And this is why Acharyas and devotees want to put the feet of Guru on their chest, on their head, to touch them with the fingers, to look, to touch them with the eyes, to smell with the nose, with all senses, to lick with the tongue. Yes, to lick with the tongue. Because this is the only way how their prema can be fully infused in my dry, stone-like heart. 
And because of that, and, and does it mean on a physical way? Because we can be in the association of Rasik devotees, days, hours, months, years, just body to body. But we have to learn how to be connected with their hearts. And then, whenever we go, we will keep this charan, these feats in our hearts. And it said, what is that? That by the mercy of Guru, Sacred greed arises in the heart. There is no other way. Only through our Gurudev and other Vaishnavas, we can receive this greed. This greed is not something which is with some kind of quality of condition soul. Conditioned soul is lobby, greedy, but for materialistic things. And with contact, with pure devotee, he will help me, help him, that this greed transform in attachment. Because this a strong attachment will help devotee to develop full devotional life and love and devotional service. Because without attachment, it's not possible to serve with devotion. So in every sadhana, we need some particular bala. This is very important. And we have to cry and pray that this bhava appears and bhava is appearing only by its own will without forcing. <laughs> so we need mercy. And Ananta Babaji is giving the way how we can got this mercy by this short sentence. Bhajana means to seek. Bhajana means to seek. Very shortly said, but very deep meaning. What does it mean to seek? I understand like diving. If we want to go deeper in bhakti, we have to learn how to dive. Not to go too high, but to dive. And this diving process actually is very slow. I don't know if someone of you have experience in diving. I am living on the coast, so I got some experience. If you want to dive, you have to be very enthusiastic, eager, but in the same time, very patient. And when we start to dive, in the beginning, it's a fast. We are moving our hands, our body, our legs, and we are going deeper, deeper. But as much as deeper we are going, the slower this journey is. This is the process of diving. Be for someone who knows what is the goal what is the pearl in the shell in the bottom of the sea? 
because person diver has a goal. I want this shell because in the shell is a beautiful lavanya, is a pearl. You understand? And for that, I need to go slowly, slowly, because I'm sure that this is the fastest way. <laughs> so how devotee is going deeply? Actually, this is bhajan devotee. The bhajan is not only chanting. Bhajan is all existence, all emotions which are immersed in desire to attain the goal. <laughs> and devotee is using then the process of bhakti for his diving or for his seeking. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, and so on. This is my understanding. I try to explain to you and repeat some words of Guru there and other Acharyas. And what I'm trying to also practice and with the mercy of all of you, maybe in one lifetime, I will attain some. Got it. Got it. Bajana means to seek. The practicing devotee feels as if he has fallen away from his Ishtade and he will cry out, O oh Radhe, where are you? Radhe. Without eagerness, burning desire in the heart, the sickness is not possible. No one wants to seek something if he doesn't have a strong desire. Because in the process of seeking, diving, we need a lot of energy, <laughs> spiritual energy, and motivation. To attain the goal. So if we approach to the process of seeking, like Shravanan, Kirtan, and Smaran, very seriously, honestly, <coughs> then it will bring us to the goal, and we have to have strong Shraddha in that. And this is the symptom of someone who has this desire to seek through his bhajan. Through his bhajan. He's always feeling that he is away from his beloved deity. Because of that, he is crying. He is crying a lot of times that no one sees it. Because his heart is falling apart. And his heart is falling apart because he has attachment. And he, about that, his strong feelings 
of ecstasy, madness, intense emotions, and he is not satisfied to be just on Smarana stage, on Dhyana stage. He wants Dhruva Anusmri to always be focused. And when it, this is not enough, he is striving, desperately striving to be in direct service without coming back anymore. So this is the process of seeking and the different stages of levels of trying to dive deeply, deeply, deeply in this bottomless ocean of Prema Bhakti. Yes, Asamayana. He will cry out. Please read one more time. The practice in devotee feels as if he has fallen away from his Ishta day. And he will cry out, O oh, Radhe, where are you? Every individual soul is qualified to become Radhika's maid servant. This is the great rare gift of Sriman Mahaprabhu. Sri Radha is the embodiment of Mahabha. Will Maya drag me away from her? Orade, will I be lashed by Maya being your maid servant? In this way, the heart will be squashed. Can Swamini ignore the eager prayer of someone who has given up everything for her sake? Taking her Mohana by the hand, she will come to witness the devotee's loving activities. Chaitanya Charitamrita says, Bhaktera Prema Cheshta Dekhi Krishnera Chamatkaram. Krishna is astonished when he sees the loving endeavors of his devotees. The Lord is the relisher of Bhakti Rasa. Radhe, Radhe. The hand of the <laughs> As we can see and hear that Radhika is always aware about the sadhana of her devotee. We should have this awareness also. 
that she is looking, hearing, supervising the sadhana of devotee. Sometimes I am not aware of it. But in this time, I have to have Shraddha. That Radha and Mohan are listening our readings, our kata, because they are relishing bhakti rasa. And the only way how they can relish bhakti rasa is through their bhaktas, devotees. So when devotees are together, they are talking, they are listening, they are glorifying Radhika and Mohan in our case. We have to be aware that they are here. Because in which place they can listen glorifying of themselves on this earth? Tell me. In this moment, I don't know what's the time in India, but here is uh, almost two o'clock. In which place in, on this earth people, devotees even, are glorifying in this moment, Radhika. Maybe in one or two. And when we are aware of this, then we will be very careful. Knowing that with our listening, with our words, with our singing, with our smarana, we are in this moment giving the pleasure to our beloved Swami. And this is the proof in the text. Anantadas Babaji is saying, taking Shyama by the hand, she will come to witness devotees' loving activities. They are still they are hiding. <laughs> But still, they are witnessing. And we have to have this strong shrug. <laughs> so, this is what is encouraging in our life. It's supposed to be encouraging. Because Radhika is witnessing. And how she is witnessing also, through the heart and through the presence of Guru, of her beloved Kinkaris. Because Radhika is always in the heart of the Guru. <laughs> so, and we know that Guru is all pervading Akanda Guru Shakti. In all time, he is present. Everywhere is present. In everyone is present. So my Radhika is witnessing me now, which I'm nonsense, nonsense I'm talking to you. Because she is present in your hearts. And she is witnessing. That I'm trying to say something, but I'm like a zero who is trying to catch the moon. But it, it's okay. It's very nice to be zero. Why it's happening? Because this is the greatest mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is the greatest gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like Baba said, that everyone in this age of quarrel, Kali can become Radha's Dasi. So many times we heard that. 
And this information we have to nourish, to water in our heart, that this information becomes strong feeling. Without Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I will be not here. Who knows what will happen with me? And this is his gracefulness, unlimited gracefulness, audarya. And it's not happening in every Kali Yuga. And why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came on the world to bring this Audarya? Unlimited gracefulness. Because very similar reason is Uh, with Radha and Krishna. In Goloka, Radha and Krishna are together. And they are tasting different balas. But one bala they cannot taste. Parakya bala. They have, they have to come on this material world, on this planet Earth, to taste Parakya bala. In the same mood, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also present in Goloka, in one part of Goloka, and he's always immersed in his beautiful nectarian kirtan with his eternal devotees. But one thing he cannot distribute his audarya because no one needs Audarya in Goloka. But Jivas in material world desperately needs such kind of gracefulness. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this is the one more reason why he become, it's not eternal reason, but because he is Radhika, <laughs> Karuna Mai, he wants to give this Karuna for to those who doesn't deserve. And she cannot do it, or he cannot do it in Goloka. He has to appear in this material world. And now one thing is coming. Why in so many places our acharyas are glorifying Chaitanya Mahaprabhu like the son of Mother Sachi. Why they are glorifying in so many places and they are not saying he is the son of Jagannath Mishra. Some, in some places, yes. But the most of glorification, he is the son of Mother Sachi. Usually, some person is presenting to the others and it said he is the son or daughter of this and that father. But now we have opposite situation. He is the son of mother. And this is very significant. Because most of our acharyas accept the mercy of Goranga. And this kind of mercy can give only mother. Mother has unconditional love everlasting love 
without any discrimination. And they receive that mercy from the son of Mother Sachi. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu acted like a mother and gave Kripa to everyone without consideration who is who, who is qualified, who is not. Even if someone is unqualified, this is better. Because he is not proud. And proudness is great obstacle. So this is our Goranga or Gorangi who became Goranga. All merciful, like a mother. So this is, I just want to share with you. Because we should feel, understand and feel which kind of Kripa cases we are already. I'm sorry, I took so long time. Please stop me. Krishna is astonished when he sees the loving endeavors of his devotees. The Lord is the relisher of bhakti rasa, the honey of devotion. This is the honey of devotion. We have the wine of devotion. But from this wine, the honey is dripping. And this is bhakti ras. And the honey of devotion, from this wine of devotion, the topmost honey, topmost quality of the honey, from this wine of devotion, is manjariba. Topmost honey. Directly is coming from the vine of devotion. And this is what Radhika and Krishna wants to relish. Our bhakti ras. Krishna told to Arjuna, I will eat any offering of leaves, flowers, fruits, and water, which anyone may offer to me with love. O son of Kunti, Whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you sacrifice, whatever you give in charity, and whatever penance you may perform, dedicate it all to me. So, we can see how many times we read these words from Bhagavad Gita? And now we can see how much rasa is present in these words of Krishna. Because Krishna wants to taste devotion of his devotee.
and it's not important what we are giving to our beloved Ishtadev. But everything has to be done with full love. And then it's tasteful. Juicy, like Gurudev is saying, juicy. And devotee is swimming in this juice. And Radhika and Krishna is also swimming in this juice. <laughs> This is the exchange of love in loving relationship, especially with the most delicious honey wine, manjari bath. And madhurya ras between Radha and Krishna. Radha. The devotee is also very eager to attain the Lord's merciful glance. How sweet is the relation between the devotee and the Lord. When Sri Dasa speaks this verse, he sees a sweet pastime with his spiritual eyes. He sees himself as Tula Simanjari, dressing up Swamini for her rendezvous in the moonlight, moonlit night. To camouflage her, she has to dress her in fitting clothes and ornaments. So she dresses her in a swan-like white sari, anoints her body with white sandal paste and ornaments her with pearls and diamonds so that it seems as if Swamini merges with the moonlight. What can I say about Rai's passionate love for Mohan? Cupid is constantly awakened in her mind. Her body is naturally shining with beauty and she goes out on Avisa in a full moon night in autumn. Her body is draped in white dress instead of her usual blue one and anointed with white sandalwood pulp. She puts white camphor lipstick on her red lips, her braid is beautified with a gar garland of kunda flowers 
and a pearl necklace hangs and oscillates on her neck. A white Kairava lotus is placed in her hand palm and rows of sandalwood spots are made on her jeweled bangles. In this way, she cannot be distinguished anymore. Just as the moonlight cannot distingu be distinguished from the moon, and water can no longer be distinguished from the milk it is poured into. The shadow that accompanies every embodied soul in the moonlight or in the sunlight as an inseparable enemy cannot harm her anymore. For the night has already surrendered to her saying, all right, for you, there won't be any shadow anymore. Gopaladasa further sings. Thus, clever Gauri Golden Radhika goes out, loosening the strings of her ankle belts so that their jingling will not betray her. Shila Rupa Gosami has written in Ujvala Nilamu. It is as if the girl merges with her own shyness. She has stifled all of her ornaments and covered herself with her veil as she goes on Abhisar with her loving girlfriends. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe. We can shortly stop here. Because we could relish this beautiful Lila. Yeah. And I will ask Rasamayi to read this sentence, which beginning with the shadow that accompanies every embodied soul. And continue this. The shadow that accompanies every embodied soul in the moonlight or in what, the sunlight. What is this shadow which is embodied? This is accompanied every embodied conditioned soul. The ego. Sorry, I didn't hear. The ego. Yeah. Yeah. You read my heart. Yes. 
This is the false ego, which follows every embodied soul like a shadow, convincing the living entity that illusion is reality. And only by meditation of bhajan, on the lila, we can enter in reality. This is the mercy which acharyas are giving us to taste reality because we already have a taste for illusion. But this is illusory taste. And the only way how we can overcome this illusion is by the taking strong bhajan in the realm of reality. And what is this reality? It is written later on in the sentence. Please. So the shadow that accompanies every embodied soul in the moonlight or in the sunlight. Or in the sunlight. In all circumstances of our life, our false ego are like a shadow is going with us. Changing different faces, like a Kaliya. Gurudev saying, like a Kaliya. Many heads and many faces on one head. In moonlight or in sunlight. When everything is auspicious, I always have my shadow behind me. And when some difficulties are coming, I also have my shadow behind me. In moonlight or in sunlight. And then, please. As an inseparable enemy. Yeah. The shadow, that shadow cannot harm her anymore. That shadow cannot harm love. Pure love in the heart, which is Radhika is represent representation, presentation of that love. Only way how we can conquer that shadow to disappear is to live in Radhika's emotions, in pure love. And can then... I, can, can I say something? Uh, uh, only yes. way to yes. to leave the shadow is to become Radhika's shadow. Yes, and this is continuing in the next <laughs> words. Yeah. Yes, beautiful. Thank you, Mahababa. Thank you. You are saving me. <laughs> <laughs> Please. For the night has already surrendered to her. Night is already surrendered to her, became her maid servant. Only way, like Mahabala said. You can see how deep the words are of our Acharyas. And of course, we can also understand these words from Rasik way. But it's very clear 
from Rasik way. And sometimes it's hidden when we have to approach from another angle. And to understand, like Mahabhava said, that only way to go from this shadow is to surrender to Radhika and become her kinkari. Radhe. All right. The night has surrendered to her strength. All right. For you, there won't be any shadow anymore. For you. For you, only for you. I will never do it for anyone else. Only because of you. I will surrender my false ego. Only in the name of love. Otherwise, I will not do it. Only in the name of love, for love, and to become love. Gurudev is coming or? No. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. From the Rasik point, we can see how even the night are serving loving pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Even the night. Everyone and everything is in Vrindavan is serving the love pastimes between Radha and Mohan. And even the night is saying, all right, you don't want any shadow? Okay, it will be not shadow. <laughs> and this is possible only in the realm of reality, not in material world. <laughs> The shadow is serving, the uh, night is serving Radha and Krishna. Because this is Radhika's desire. Ladira. Swamini holds Tulasi's hand and follows her on the forest path. Fearfully looking here and there and saying, Tulasi, I have no other shelter but you, take me with you. Her beautiful glances make the forests of Vrindavana even more beautiful than the carefully protected inner petals of a newly opened blue lotus flower. So, we can see here how Radhika is depending on her shadow. Completely. He is surrendering to the guidance of her shadow, Kinkari. And Gurudev many times explained that usually shadow is going behind the person, following the person. But sometimes in Vraja, shadow goes in front of person. To guide her in her love journey, rendezvous, Abhisar, 
to be loved, Mohan. And Radhika is completely surrendering to her shadow because he has complete loyalty. She has complete loyalty to her and full love. And there is no any hesitation in Radhika's heart. Should I believe her or should I not? Should I do this or should I don't do? No. She said, please help me. I don't have any other shelter than you. This is the gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. For the fallen souls of Kali Yuga to become the shadow of Radhika, personification of pure, most ecstatic love. Radhika. The wonderful beauty of her eyes. <laughs> are as if awakening a flood of beauty on the chest of the environment's natural beauty. Swamini is afraid, but Tulasi encourages her and saying, come, come, why are you afraid? I am here with you. Swamini looks at Tulasi, who makes her fearless. She feels consoled and silently walks on. Tulasi is Swamini's shelter. Blessed is this maid servant that she can render such service. She provides shelter to Swamini, who is the shelter of Mohani, who is again the shelter of the whole world. Radhe, can you read this sentence one more time? Blessed is this maidservant that she can render such service. She provides shelter to Swamini. She provides shelter to Swamini. It's not that Swamini provides shelter to her. And this is Manjari Bhav. And this is possible only because in Manjari Bhav, devotee has a strong feeling. You are mine. And I am taking care of you. You take shelter on me. I will protect you. And this is only possible in Vraj. And Swamini happily surrendered, surrendering herself to her kinker. Completely depending on her kinker. And kinker is expertly serving Swamini because she wants to provide 
her shelter. Actually, she wants to provide her everything what Radhika needs. And this is my responsibility. We should understand this difference between you are mine and I am yours. And Gurudev many times explains, when devotee has these strong feelings, I am yours, there's still some lacking in pure love. Because there is always dependence of Radhika or of Krishna. You take care about me. I am praying to you, please protect me and do it. Please. But this strong feeling, you are mine, is upon everything. What no one can imagine, actually, which kinds of things are appear from this strong feeling. And what is appears? That Manjari is guiding Radhika on her Abhisar and Radhika voluntarily taking the shelter of her Kinkari. She provides shelter to Swamin. Provides shelter. This is Manjari Bhava. And we cannot learn it and we cannot feel it from conditioned state of life. Only from Swarup. Allowing ourselves to be infused with this feeling of minus, you are mine, from someone who already had it. This is the reason why we need to follow Radha Dasi's Kinkaris. Because the most intense feeling is Radhe Swamini, my dear. You are mine, and I will do everything for you, not expecting that you are doing for me. I will do it for you. And I know what is in your heart. And this is what I want to provide for you. To be always with your lover, who is depend on your love. And in that way, she is Govinda Jivana. She is giving the pleasure, the life, to Govinda who is giving the pleasure to everyone, but she is giving pleasure to him because she has this feeling, you are mine. You understand? And because of that, she is giving the life to go Vinda. How she is giving the life to go Vinda? by fulfilling desires, all desires, innumerable desires of his senses go. And when Krishna, with full his desires, with all his go, comes to Radhika, meet Radhika, with, he becomes go, Vinda. Then all his desires are fulfilled and he considers himself alive.
that, that. Please continue. Or someone wants to say something. Tulasi says, I will bring you into the hands of he who eagerly sits down hoping to meet you. How incomparably beautiful is the heart of this maid servant. How unfortunate I am that I am deprived of this nectarian Radha Dasya. Although I know everything about it, I always identify myself with my material body and I never think of myself as Radhika's maid servant. I am simply mad after profit, adoration and distinction. Mercy is the only hope. Got it. I just want everything is clear. Baba has already said everything is clear. But I just want to say something that how Baba is very expertly writing his commentaries actually. He's starting with warnings, with explanation about importance of bhajana, sadhana, and so on. Explanations of vipralamba, the state in which heart of Raghunath is deeply immersed, the separation. Then he goes on the lila. And suddenly, from the lila, she jumps, jumping out, and he's trying, and he's crying. He's crying by writing and saying, "How unfortunate I am that I'm deprived of this nectarian Radha Dasya," and so on and so on. I just wanted to po point out how he is guiding our heart and mind in Lila, but knowing who we are, on which stage we are. He is always warning us, speaking to himself. He is giving a taste, and then he is giving us opportunity to purify our consciousness and heart. Then he is giving the taste, then again he is giving the opportunity to purify our heart. And again, like waves, because this is a sadhana bhakti, way of practicing sadhana bhakti. I am relishing, and then I'm doing my homework. And then again, I'm relishing and I'm doing my homework. I just wanted to say this <laughs> to point out that. Tulasi takes Swamini along. 
making her fearless. The course of the fulfillment of desires cannot be stopped. Can the thorny thicket in the form of her superiors be crossed? <clears throat> Govinda Dasa says, she shines like the personified splendor of Eros fame and glory as she meets Govinda in the Nikunja. Pada Kalpata. Tulasi enters the Tristing Kunja with Shirana, who is dressed in white. Like the fame and glory of the ornamentation of amorous enjoyment, Mohana is eagerly waiting and he floats in an ocean of rasa when he sees Tulasi and Swamini coming. Holding Swamini's hand, Tulasi says, Ah, moon with night, fear of superiors, daylight illumination, with unlimited expertise, I have brought your Sukumari, tender girl, here. Here, take your beloved. And she places Swamini's hand in Mohana's hand. As Shiraguna does, stretches out his hand, he doesn't catch anything anymore. The revelation has disappeared and he begins to lament. Radhe, before we continue in lamentation mode, I want to just point out on one sentence how expertly, very cleverly, Manjari is speaking with Krishna. Before she puts her head in her hand. And she's saying, a moonlight night. Fear of superiors, they like illumination. In these three short sentences, very short words, actually, Tulasi explaining Krishna through which kind of obstacles her beloved Swamini has to go to meet him. And he said just, she said, a moonlight night. Hey, you have to understand. It was night full of moonlight. Everyone could see my Swamini. So it was one great obstacle for her. Then Manjari is saying, Fear of superiors. You have understand how his eternal uh, situation was 
eternal feelings. He, she was full of fear because she had to run away from Yavat, from her superiors. It's not so easy for her. You have to appreciate her strong desire to come to her. So in that way, Manjaris, if you can catch this, Manjaris are preparing Krishna's mind. Oh my dear, be careful. You have to appreciate her. Because it was a moonlight night. And fear of superiors. And they like illumination. Everything was illuminated. All Vrindavana was illuminated because of this full moon light. And then Tulasi continues and said, with unlimited expertise, I have brought your Sukumari here. She is proud. This is the proudness of Manjari Bal. I expertly decorated her because it was moonlight. I expertly encouraged her because she was in fear. And they and I removed all obstacles in her abyssar because it was daylight illumination. And Manjari continued, with unlimited expertise, I have brought your Sukumari here. Take your beloved. And be gentle. <laughs> so this is Manjari Baba. This is the way how Manjari is talking with Krishna. And he is very carefully is listening them and following their instructions. That unlimited. Mm -hmm. With unlimited expertise, I have brought your Sukumari, tender girl, here. Here, take your beloved. And she places Swamini's hand in Mohana's hand. As Shiraguna Das stretches out his hand, he doesn't catch anything anymore. The revelation has disappeared and he begins to lament. Alas, O oh Swamini, When will that boundlessly sweet glance of yours become visible to my eyes? Raghunath's life airs reach his throat when he feels the agony of love in separation. Shirasika Chandra Dasa sings. Alas, O oh Devi, when will that blessed day be mine? When you will go out to meet Krishna in the full moon autumn night. 
which is inundated by moonlight. You are very much afraid at heart and your restless bee-like eyes move in all directions. While you look at bluish Sri Vrindavan from the corners of your eyes, the Kuvalaya lotus petals begin to blossom. When will you mercifully cast a drop of your glance at this maid servant that is the quint essence of happiness? I don't want anything else but your lotus feet. Thus ends the verse 13.